All right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit more about Webflow. Now, as I've interacted with the Webflow community, just sort of basically, uh, not just Webflow, but the no-code community, I'm running into a lot of designers. I'm running into a lot of people that don't have a, a classic web development background. And uh, I thought, well, maybe there's a space because I've gone through all the Webflow tutorials too, the videos, <clears throat> and they're great for showing you click this, do this, this is how you do these things. But as far as teaching you how to design websites um, and to, to include web development concepts, uh, they're not as strong in those areas. And so I thought maybe that's a, a gap that I could fill as a web developer who writes code by hand every day um, <clears throat> maybe I can bring some of that knowledge to the Webflow community to the no-code community so in this uh, in this video I'm going to show you about semantic HTML now the thing about web code uh, Webflow is it's really a web develop it's like a a graphic interface for web development more than it is mm, a graphic interface for web design design that would be more like Photoshop or Illustrator or XD or Figma you know one of those uh, types of programs where you can sort of manipulate everything around just like you would in an image editing program but with a web flow it's CSS it's HTML it's JavaScript but it's all just sort of overlaid with a graphic interface you're not dealing just straight putting code in um, so to me that's the distinction uh, there is code happening it's just that you're not having to write it you're you're clicking or you're moving things and that's essentially writing the code for you but you still need to know the principles of web development uh, otherwise what you come out with on the other side is going to look good but as soon as you hand it off to somebody else it's going to be a mess which is something that's happened to me uh, just in our small department uh, when we tried it uh, the first time uh, designer did it and it looked great functioned great when you were inside of Webflow but we, we wanted to get it out of Webflow and put it on one of our servers and there were no class names that were discernible I mean it gives class names because it has to uh, but they're automated class names which don't mean anything to anybody so unless you give classes IDs semantic elements unless you build it like a website then it's not going to mean anything to anybody on the other side. So hopefully through this series I can show you um, just how we go about doing web development, just doing it in a graphical interface like Webflow. Okay, and all these elements exist in the Webflow interface, whether you know about them or not. And so hopefully I'll be opening up new concepts or new ideas to you. In this video, we're going to focus on uh, semantic HTML tags. Um, Hopefully you're not going to get too bored by this, but it really does help with the accessibility of the website. Uh, what is accessibility? Accessibility means uh, if someone's using a screen reader or if someone has some sort of disability or even uh, every page gets crawled by a robot, whether it's the Googlebot or, or Bing or somebody, Yahoo, uh, people are always crawling websites. And when they crawl websites, they're not looking at the visuals. So they don't care what the picture looks like. They only know that it's an image tag. They don't care what the section looks like. They only know that it's either a div or a section or a navigation or a header or whatever. So they're actually reading the code. Um, and with the screen reader, they're reading it out loud to the user. So it, ha it needs to make some sort of sense uh, to those sort of um, baseline robots basically who are reading uh, the code so this is not only about visual design it's also about the underlying code and what that looks like how it executes so uh, let's get into the semantic elements so the first thing that we have is our our navigator right so our navigator is going to show us all of the major elements and sections um, that are in webflow so uh, we can always add anything, right? We can add sections, containers, grids, columns, 
uh, divs and lists and all these different things. Uh, when we add, let's say, a section, it gives us this full width section here. It's called section, and it's actually given, I believe it's given uh, the HTML. Uh, it's sort of hooked into the HTML called section. So if you wanted to uh, make all of your sections something, you can actually use that section tag we can do that in in writing the code too you can use the section tag or header or nav you can make all of those elements do something with css so that's something you can hook into now when we come over here we have our selector selector just means uh, to put a class onto it and in this gear icon we have some other things here so this is where we really want to be for this video right now we'll cover um, We'll cover IDs and classes in a separate video. So what we're looking for is the tag. So when you do a section, the default is going to be called the div. Okay, so uh, when you click this and you open it up, we've got all these different types of HTML tags that we can actually uh, make this. We can make this be one of these tags. So we have a header, uh, which is a section for all of the header like a title author so if you think about a, an article or a blog page <clears throat> the header might include the the title of the article a subtitle the author artic, the author's name uh, the date that it was published and that would all be sort of in the head section of that article uh, you can have headers to pages you can have headers or cards like a card layout you know the top part of the card would be the header um, so the header is just the sort of the introductory or the head part of the not the main body of it but just the head part of the um, whatever element it is uh, you can do a footer a footer is the opposite so not the top but the bottom part so it could be the bottom part of a page it could be the bottom part of a card or uh, some other sort of UI element uh, there is a nav tag which obviously is going to be some sort of navigation and the important thing to know about these is that these elements can be nested inside of each other so you're not you don't just have one of these on the page you're building each component with each of these things so your card or your uh, your header section with your logo and your navigation and all that kind of stuff it might be uh, called header and then inside of that you might have a navigation section over to the right so uh, let's go to the next one main main is the main content on the whole page so you want to mark wherever the main content of the page is you want to mark that top to bottom with with the main tag so you just want to wrap all of the main content uh, for a blog article it would be when the article starts and the ar article ends and it would not include the sidebar or the footer or the header so just to sort of have a frame of reference. A section is a rather generic uh, tag. It just means that this is a new a new section of the document. Um, it's sort of a it's, it's in, a, in effect like a div but better than a div because it's more descriptive. Um, an article is supposed to be something that is um, republishable. So if you think like a blog post would be an article so from the top to the bottom of the blog post or if you have multiple blog posts on one page inside of a main element then each of those blog posts would be wrapped with an article uh, tag uh, the aside the aside is something that is only um, ancillary to all of the main content so if you took the aside off the page the page would still make sense so you can think of sidebars call outs um, any sort of like tables or extra information uh, maybe even advertisements could be put into an aside so you're just you're you're saying this is not part of the main content it's just coming alongside the main content to give more information uh, the address it defines contact information for a person or uh, a company or whatever um, the address is just sectioned off in its own tag and then the figure 
includes things like illustrations you can see over here diagrams photos uh, code listings and things like that so you're sort of uh, you're saying that this is ancillary to the article but it's related to the article and we have some other uh, different things that we can use inside of that like fig captions and things like that so uh, figure is is a way to also section off um, graphic elements for the for the page so these are our our HTML semantic elements and what you would do is when you create a section you come over and you just tag it with a header and then maybe you create another section here underneath and then this is where our main content is going to go and then you create another section here and we'll say this is going to be uh, the aside so this might be our sidebar and we'll create another one and this is going to be a footer so that when we come back you can see this is our header main aside and footer now when you come to your navigation it's not going to change anything because these names here are given according to uh, your class or your tag which we'll talk about in a separate video uh, all of this doesn't <laughs> seem to make any uh, difference to anything but when you look at the actually let's publish it let's publish it and then we'll look at the actual web page and then you can see uh, what that looks like so to get into our um, tools uh, development tools we do at least for Chrome it's control shift I um, we have a couple of different things you can do like uh, different sizes here uh, to check responsiveness and things like that but we want to be under the elements tab and you can see here that our HTML elements have been added even though we don't have any content inside them each of our elements has been added to the page and then these are our JavaScript elements down at the bottom and then this is the maiden webflow so you can see inside the body that we have all these different sections and that is going to make our page easier to um, easier to index, easier to understand for robots and for uh, any program that's reading the page out loud. Um, hopefully, that I hope you can see the importance of it. If you can't, maybe you can just trust me on this one. <laughs> as as someone who's had to deal with. Um, tons of divs everywhere and and things just don't make sense when you go through the code and there's only div blocks inside of div blocks inside of div blocks it doesn't make sense to a person either much less a computer that's only reading those things uh, and we've had to do all sorts of gymnastics over the years before HTML5 to say oh this one this one is for navigation and this one is for this and this one is for that so we've had to put all this sort of extra tagging in there into the HTML that we don't have to do as much anymore. Um, some things fall outside of uh, sort of the neat HTML5 tags so you do need to still give it a role or whatever but a lot of that stuff has been taken care of uh, just by having these semantic tags. So use them inside of Webflow and we get to them by the gear icon. You click on an element and then it's this one, the tag. So every time you create a new section, <clears throat> every time you create a new, uh, even if you came inside this first section and you wanted to add, uh, let's say, a div block inside this one that you wanted to be the navigation, uh, then you would come over here and you would say, oh, I want that to be navigation. And now all of a sudden you see, okay, this is a navigation tag, right? if you wanted it to be uh, something else then you can see how it changes uh, inside there so uh, use main for the main section of the uh, of the body uh, not necessarily for the main section of an element uh, you can do that I suppose uh, but I've only seen the main section be for the body itself um, but again don't just use divs all over the place. Divs are great, but if it has some sort of semantic meaning, if it means this is navigation 
or this is a header or a footer for this section, then use those semantic tags. And uh, they behave exactly like a div block, um, and it doesn't require that much more to say, oh, well, this is navigation, okay? Um, it's a very easy way to, to create a more accessible website for people. All right, if you have any questions or comments, um, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to get around to uh, doing several more of these videos and sort of package them all together in a playlist and, and teach you the basics of HTML, but inside of a no-code environment like Webflow. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, click subscribe and then click the bell and you'll get notified every time that I put out a new video. Um, if you'd like to pay it forward, uh, you can either share or simply click the thumbs up button. That helps the video sort of spread out uh, and help more people. And um, if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Brian Haferkamp, H-A-F-E-R-K-A-M-P. And uh, I'd love to connect with you there as well. All right. Uh, well, until the next video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.